I killed them. It says I killed them. That party is over. It says, just kill John Worley. That's me. <laughs> this is going to be great. We're Amy and Adam, and this is Kindred Spirits Inside the Investigation. This investigation is in Villisca, Iowa, at what is known as the Villisca Axe Murder House. This was a case that we had been wanting to do for a very long time. We'd heard a lot of stories come out of the Villisca Axe Murder House, uh, but... Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, be careful what you wish for, for real. We never... It didn't really fit, like, our normal mission statement. It was a place we were very curious about until we were contacted by a gentleman named John Worley who had an experience at the Velisca house that he was convinced had led to a series of unfortunate events for him. What got me scared, I got a recording that says, just kill John Worley. That's me. Wow, we'll have to listen to that before we start investigating. That's the tip of the iceberg. And then after he got that EVP in the house, a number of his friends and family got very ill or passed away, and he felt it was him, that, that something he had picked up at the house had cursed him. We weren't there necessarily to find out who did it, because everyone goes there to find out who did it, who did it. It was about who is doing this to our friend John Worley, and what is his experience, and is he in danger? And that was our big, big moment, and our focus I guess, went to how do we get activity in the house? Because the first night that we were in the house, activity was very slim. In order to understand who's haunting this house and why it would threaten John Worley, we have to awaken the beast. First, I'm offering myself as bait to test if in fact it feeds off fear by sitting alone in the attic. Amy's stationed in the barn and can only hear my audio and communicate via walkie. Probably one of the freakiest moments of, of this season for me is, is going to the Velisca uh, Axe Murder House by myself because I knew that I was going to go in there and I knew I was going to go in there alone. So we put a camera up on sticks and it's facing the entrance to the attic and I put a chair there and I'm just going to sit here by myself. I have the EMF recorder, I have the SLS camera, I have the stationary camera, I have my walkie talkie, I have the K2 meter. Going into that house and being completely alone for the first first time was more intimidating than I thought it was going to be. And I remember at first I didn't even want to bring up the murders. Like, no, I was listening to you and I remember looking at the camera operator and going, he doesn't want to talk about the murders, yeah. but he's going to have to talk about the yeah. murders. And I didn't want to because I was, I was a little afraid of what I was going to get because I just knew there was something there. Did you kill those children? So I'm going to play this back to see if you talk to me. I killed them. I killed them. It says I killed them. This house was playing on your fears. Whatever was here was playing on your emotions. If you were afraid, it gave you what you wanted. If you wanted it to attack and be crazy, it did it because it fed off of that kind of situation. That place, the activity that you get is, is what you give. So for Adam and me, we walk into an investigation like, like we're going to a party and we don't know anybody and we want to make friends. We walk in usually like welcoming and like, hi, how are you? My name's Amy, this, you know, this is Adam. And we're introducing ourselves and talking about everyday things and we're approachable. And that's how we get a response most of the time. But once we realized we were dealing with the killer, it was a very different set of terms. Then we started really kind of uh, taking it a little bit further. And it was apparent that he really feeds on that. Preying on weak people who come in here, that's going to stop because we're on to your little trick. Oh, let's see. There's someone in the attic with me. Preying on weak people who come in here, that's going to stop because we're on to your little trick. That party is over. Oh my god. He was very angry that there was a woman in his space, he, like basically assaulting him, telling him like it was. Uh, and and that kind of furthered like this theory that we had that 
that place, the activity that you get is, is what you give. He was kind of at points giddy about what he was gonna do. Like, this is gonna be great. So what's his favorite? What does he eat up? Easily manipulated. Easily yeah. manipulated. Weak. Weak. Yeah. Weak. Putty in his hands. He can affect me. Hmm. And he's backed way off of me because he knows I'm on to him. It was good to have Chip with us on this case. I mean, again, Chip giving us his thoughts and feelings and impressions on the space, but also Chip talking about uh, the, the killer in a way where we had already knew a lot of the information and Chip knew nothing about it and he was like spot on with a lot of the weird things. I mean, he is a wizard, it's so weird. But also connecting with John's loved ones who had passed on, who John at that time felt responsible yeah. a little bit for. You didn't do anything. And she's saying this, you didn't do anything. It was my time to go. You thought you brought some things upon yourself and upon those that you love. I can tell you this. I don't get anybody from Spirit who's coming at you and going, you caused this. We had to kind of explain to him that yes, you had this crazy EVP, but that does not make you responsible for bad things that happen to your friends and your family. And so he felt so much better after that. He still is thanking us, you right. know, weeks, months later. Yeah. I think we solved it for John, but I think we have more work to do uh, in our own way for, for Velisca and, and, the, and the town. Thanks for watching, and keep up with Kindred Spirits and more behind the scenes action on Travel Channel Go.